Hi, it's Christina and we're talking test tips. And today we're gonna to talk about the math section of the SAT. All right, we're gonna talk about the math section of the SAT and how best to prepare for and own these sections. So first let's break it down. The whole math section is a total of 80 minutes and 58 questions. You begin with the no calculator section, which is 20 questions in 25 minutes. And the first 15 are multiple choice. And the last five are those student produced gridded responses. You know, the kind where you have to bubble in your exact answer, the kind where there are no answer choices to help you along. And then you get out your calculator and you complete the next section, which is 38 questions in 55 minutes. And you guessed it, the first 30 are multiple choice and the last eight are those student graded responses. So some people get stressed about the no calculator section and perhaps it's because it's different from the ACT where you're allowed to use your calculator for the entire math section, but never fear. You will find that you don't really need your calculator for any portion of the test. So when you're doing that no calculator section and you come upon a problem where the numbers seem too difficult to manipulate without your calculator, then you need to rethink your strategy because there definitely is a simpler way. Okay, now let's talk about some strategies for the math section. So one, mark it and skip it. You do not want to spend too much time on any one problem. So don't let a question stump you for too long before you mark it, skip it, and move on. You wanna make sure you have a watch or you can see the clock because you do really wanna keep an eye on the time. Two, the math section is mostly ordered from easy to hard. So the questions get more difficult as you progress through the section, but this is true for each part of the section. So in other words, the last couple of multiple choice on the no calc section, those are gonna be more difficult than the rest. But once you start that student produced response questions, they're again gonna start from easy to hard. And the same thing will be true when you start the calculator section. The multiple choice will begin with the easier ones and getting more difficult. And then again with the student response, begin again with the easier ones and getting more difficult. So the key is that you want to have more time for those challenging questions at the end, but you still need to be sure you spent enough time to get those first questions correct. So you need to get the easier problems right. So we're gonna move quickly, but not so fast that you make careless errors. And three, don't forget to guess. Remember, you can return to your unanswered or unsured questions when maybe you have a few minutes left at the end, but there is no penalty for incorrect responses. So don't leave any question blank. Always put down a guess and yes, it's hard to guess on those student produced response questions, but just grit in something. Four, when you go back, try something new. If you have time at the end and you're gonna to return to those questions that you were unsure of, don't do the same thing that you did last time, right? We wanna come up with a new way, a new strategy to think about this question, or maybe try plugging in the answer choices and see what works. Five, use the formula sheet. So unlike the ACT, the SAT does give you a reference sheet and mostly it's formulas having to do with geometry. And you probably already know this information, but it's provided just in case. So you want to familiarize yourself with the information that's on this sheet before you take the exam. So you know what kind of information is provided. And the last strategy is to remember that overall you need to solve quickly, but accurately. So this is not like math class. You need to try to find the quickest way to solve each problem. So this means you're not just staring at a question, you are actively answering the question. Do you need to solve an equation? Do you need to write one? Sketch a quick table or graph. Pictures can really help visualize sometimes the question or the answer. Either way, you need to practice this active problem solving when you're doing your studying and preparing for the test. So you're ready to do that during the test. The math section is 
totally beatable as long as you practice effectively. So when you study, be sure you're really engaging with those questions and you're learning why you got anyone's wrong that you got wrong or how to solve them. So just looking over math questions is not going to help you. You have to do the questions. And in fact, it is best to complete at least one full timed practice test before the test day. And in order to practice these strategies that we just talked about on the actual SAT, you need to do those during a timed test. So I recommend actually printing out the test if you can and the bubble sheet and then set a timer, start solving. And if you don't finish in the allotted time, go ahead and keep answering all the remaining questions, but mark how much additional time you needed. So once you've finished your practice test, you're gonna check your answers and you're gonna figure out what you need to keep doing and what do you need to change? So ask yourself, are there any patterns in your mistakes? Are you missing mostly geometry questions, abstract questions, questions with a lot of words? Do you struggle with those student produced gridded questions? Do you just need more time? So then you identify your weaknesses and you try to figure out how you're answering the questions and what you need to do instead or differently. So what can you do to speed up your process? If you don't analyze your mistakes, then you can do all the practice tests in the world, but you're just gonna keep making the same mistakes. Practice does not make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. All right, happy practicing.